For many of us engaged in remote instruction, Zoom is going to be an important app. It's more than just screencasting, which allows us to present content and add our narrative voice to it. It also allows for a synchronous live conference where we can interact with our students with chat, audio, and also video. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's possible with it. If you haven't already signed up, please do so. And if you have signed up and you have not already linked it with your MiraCosta account, likewise, do so. That will add to the capability of what Zoom can do for you. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I'm doing so with my MiraCosta email account, and I've provided a different password than my Surf ID and password. And I'll go ahead in here and click Sign In. When you sign in, it'll show you your profile. I've already clicked on where it says Meetings, and I'm now going to click on Schedule a New Meeting. For the meeting, I provided a name, the date and time when it'll take place, the duration, that the meeting ID will be generated automatically, the video will be on for the host but off for the participant, at least at this time, the audio will be both by telephone as well as computer audio, so if a student doesn't have a microphone, they can still call in with their cell phone, for example. I have mute participants upon entry so they don't actually accidentally disclose information they don't want to, and enable the waiting room so that when they log in, they'll be in a waiting room until the meeting officially starts. And now I'll go ahead and click Save. Having saved it, Zoom provides me a URL that I can send out for people to join the Zoom uh, conference. There's also an invitation that includes more complete information. I'm going to go with that, so I'll copy the meeting information, close it, and head on over to Canvas, and in Canvas, in my memory module, I'm going to add a page that has this Zoom meeting information. So I'm adding a page, new page, I'll call it uh, Zoom session memory, and click add item. Uh, go ahead and move it on up after, well, let's put it before the guest lecture. I'll make it visible, edit it by clicking on it first, and then clicking the edit button. And then in the rich text uh, format box, I'm going to go ahead and paste it. And at this point, the URL is text, so it's not clickable. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to do Control K, or you could do Command K. And I will paste it here. And for target, new window, and click OK. All right, so now it's clickable. I will save it. And then when it gets to be right before the meeting, I can go ahead and uh, just copy this and put it into an announcement and, and send it out. So now students can find it either in the announcements or they can see it uh, as part of the, the memory uh, module. Okay, with that done, back to the meeting information here. And let's say it's now just before the start of the meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start This Meeting and then click Open to Zoom Meetings. All right, so there we are. I'm going to test speakers and microphone. Testing. Testing. All right, looks good. So now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring up my browser and I'm going to head over to my content, the memory exercise. There we go, it's set up back to my Zoom session, here we are, and let's start recording. So let's say students are now here, we're going to click on record to the class. This meeting is being recorded. And I'm going to share the screen. Let's see, here we go. And click on the little share button. And here we are. So let's test your memory. I'm going to share with you several words. 
Go ahead and remember as many as you can, and at the very end, I'll ask that you write down uh, all those that you can recall in any order you want. So here we go. Sour, honey, bitter, heart, tooth, knives, sugar, chocolate, taste, tart, candy, soda, good, cake, pie. Okay, write them down. Write down all the words that you can, anywhere you want. Let's see how good your memory is, how many of those words you can recall. Okay, once everyone's had a chance to write down these words, let's see how you did. How many of you got sour? I suspect that almost everyone got sour. The fact that we tend to remember items at the very beginning of the list is known as a primacy effect. Nice. I bet many of you got nice as well as candy. That's why when you send someone off with a shopping list, put the most important things at the top, especially if they've read them out loud to you. Okay, what about sugar? Probably fewer. What about sweet? If you recall sweet, you just had a false memory. That is, the word sweet never appeared on the study list. But a lot of people still have this as a false memory because sweet is associated with all these other words. And as you heard each of these other words, it was strengthening that thought of sweet. And so when I said the word sweet, many of you thought, oh, that must have been one of the words. In fact, sometimes people are more certain of sweet than they are of some other word that was on this list that they actually uh, correctly recalled. Okay, so that's a fun demonstration of a false memory. At this point, I'm going to click the stop share or back. And I will go ahead and click the dot, dot, dot for more. And let's say it's the end of the class session. So I'll click stop recording. And yes. And now I'll click end meeting. OK, close this little dialog box. Head over to the launch. Click on um, the Zoom logo here. And from there, click on my account. I've clicked on recordings, and from recordings, I'm going to now click on share for the Psych 101 Memory Part A. And it says I can uh, share this publicly, but I don't necessarily want viewers to be able to download it. And here is the URL. So I'll grab that, copy it, let's see. And now I can share that with the students. I'll click close, and then I'll head on over to Canvas. I'll go back into my uh, Zoom sessions memory. And now that the meeting has taken place, I can go ahead and just delete most of this right here. Let's delete all that and put um, view meeting online and highlight it right click copy and I'll do that control K or command K thing and then I'm going to paste it and then target I always do new window it opens it up in a new tab so the person doesn't leave the canvas environment click OK and then click Save now a student can click on this uh, link, brings up the recorded Zoom session, and adjust the volume here to the cloud. So let's test your memory. Hey. I'm going to share with you. That's deja vu experience there, right? OK, so that's one way that we can do a, a Zoom recording and then uh, take the URL when we're done and put it back into our Canvas course materials. Hope that you found this useful.